Joining me now to talk more about this is cybersecurity expert Scott Schober. He's president and CEO of Berkeley Veritronic Systems. Scott, thank you for coming on. Uh, my first question, are companies like Google and Yahoo willingly handing over information that allows government access to email accounts? Well, well certainly not. Uh, they're in a sense being forced to do this against their will and the problem they have is certainly they, they can't really tell the public about it. They, they use information where they look at emails and things of that sort for their own internal purposes to, to use it for advertising and things like that to get top dollar and that's why they scan actively all the different emails uh, but yet when the, the federal government NSA has got uh, uh, specific orders that they have to turn these things over they have no choice they have to comply but they can't really tell the public about it and, and that makes it very difficult so they're actually in a, uh, a lawsuit against the federal government you know, ironically Google and Microsoft joined forces to actually sue them so they could provide more transparency explain to the public and especially their customer base what's really going on and why they're providing this information in email and, and database records and it's not just emails uh, that can be compromised we're talking about you know uh, personal information about your identity, about your banking, medical records. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. If you think about that, banking and medical records, that, that provides a lot of information, a wealth of information about a personal, uh, personal lifestyle or what you do. Those things should be kept confidential. At least there's a perceived confidentiality in that. But certainly there's not when the NSA kind of has a back door. They can unencrypt these emails. They can really go through this and pull the data out to do all kinds of things. So privacy certainly is compromised. Uh, these back doors, though, why can't these companies close them? I, I heard a great analogy yesterday, and that was, you know, the, these companies sell us the locks, but then give the keys to the government. Well, actually, you make a really good point there. They are complying with the law. So under the law, they're doing the right things. There's a perceived level of privacy and security. Emails, for the most part, are encrypted by, by Google, if you have a Gmail account and other things like that. Uh, of course, a Gmail account is free. There's about a half a, a billion people or so that have Gmail accounts. That's a huge number of people. But mm -hmm. if you're paying nothing for the account, it kind of opens the door up and allow the NSA or other agencies to have access to that. So you're kind of complying and allowing that to happen if you have a, an email account like that. Interesting. So uh, I guess the question is, how can people um, avoid this without going off the grid entirely, which is next to impossible in this day and age? Yeah, that's a tough one. You could do some good best practices, uh, minimize things that you actually put out there. As crazy as it sounds, if you're all over different social networks and you have a Facebook page and visiting all these different social networks and putting up pictures, people can find out a lot of information about you, your private life, or perhaps your business life. So minimizing that's certainly important. You can put a level of encryption on things, but again, in certain cases, agencies such as the NSA can, can take that off. They've got the key, in a sense, to unlock that. So if they really want to access it, they'll tell a Google or, or another provider, I want that information. They can unlock it, unencrypt it, and they can read it. So there's a limited number of things that you can do there to really protect yourself. But it is what it is. Scott, we've learned that this has happened you know, pretty much over the last 10 years, uh, since 9-11. What about the justification that this snooping, this watching, this investigating is all uh, in the name of protecting ourselves to prevent terrorism, to get one foot up on those who may want to harm us? Well, I believe personally there is some truth to that. I, I, the NSA is not really caring about what we're going to buy at the grocery store, if that's in an email or something like that. They're looking really for specific tags or meta tags, things that are going to take them to another level, perhaps if it's a tie to a terrorist or, or some organized crime or things of that sort. So they're really looking with a fine-tooth comb to find key words that will take them to the path so they can actually do things to uh, catch the bad guys in a sense. So the general information that they're sifting through, most of that gets uh, tossed out the door. And interestingly, uh, according to the U.S. law, after 180 days, there's really no perceived privacy on an email. So after that time period expires, they can access that really with, without having to go get a subpoena or a warrant or anything else like that. So they're complying within the federal law. Cybersecurity expert Scott Schober, good to have you on. Thank you.